Okay, welcome back. It's time for our first hot topic. Are you into the fashion industry? Are you wondering how to grow a sustainable fashion brand by leveraging technology? Or are you just a keen observer and you're wondering how fashion has evolved and how is it that fashion today is so glamorous, it's so smooth, it's so clean? Well, I have someone here with me who is going to give us all the answers that we have uh, questions to. Mobalaji Jaji is my guest this morning. She is a fashion designer. She's a highly trained Nigerian fashion designer, uh, one of the few fashion patternists in Nigeria delivering versatile and trendy fashion to her very varying clientele. Good morning to you, Balaji. How are you doing? Good morning. I'm fine. So good to have you join us. Thank you for having me. First of all, tell us a bit about yourself. Um, okay, I'll say my name is Mobola Jaji, and I'm the creative director of Olam Creations and Fashion School. Um, at Olam Creations Fashion School, that's where we provide ready-to-wear bespoke and bridles and pattern training. We also run um, an initiative where um, we train secondary school girls in the art and skill of tie-dye making and dressmaking just to, you know, catch them young. Mm. Um, so... Um, Olam Creation has been, I've been in business for, I'll be 10 years in the coming year. Oh, that's a decade. Yeah. It's so, no joke. Yeah, I'm a graduate of marketing from the Yaba College of Technology. Okay, tell us, how did, um, you, how did you start the journey of Olam okay. uh, Creations? Yeah, it's, um, it was more of a passion and also um, of a yearning, you know, to satisfy a need. And that need is the fact that um, growing up, while I'm growing up, I had, um, we had, you know, um, challenges with get, getting tailors to, you know, get the right outfit, you know, get you to um, have what you tell them to do. Most times it's like giving you something else. They can't follow specifications in mm. terms of, you know, delivery. And so that also um, birth, um, gave, um, gave me the drive towards, you know, coming up um, with my business. So it's more of a passion and a yearning, you know, to bridge that gap. Interesting. Um, what challenges did you face? Did you face challenges or was it smooth sailing for you? Well, if anyone tells you there are no challenges, I guess they're actually lying to you. So um, coming into the fashion industry, I'll tell you, it's not as easy as it looks. You know, you see the glamour, you see everything, and the struggle is really, is, is real. Yeah, there's the, um, there's the challenge of getting the right persons, you know, that understand how you work. Because I work with the pattern drafting um, kind of sewing. So getting skilled workers in that area is a bit challenging. Mm -hmm. So most times you have to school them. And in the process of schooling them, you also have to grow them, you know, into your business. But sometimes some of them fall out because they get frustrated because they do not really know the basics of it. So that's the challenge. And we have the challenge of, you know, um, I would say financing too is part of it. Because if you're going to grow a um, sustainable fashion brand, you need a lot. You need a lot to, at least to start with. When you say you it's need not a easy. lot of money, what kind Not of a lot of money in that sense. You need capital. Okay. Because running a business is not just about you starting a business, but sustaining it. So in having to sustain it, you need, you know, a little bit of finance to back you up. So that, that's one of the challenges we face. So as, how do you, you know, overcome small those business. challenges? Yeah, this is just it. There's this, there's this thing they say about fashion that it's always good to create a niche. But in, 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 in the um, process of you trying to create a niche, you also have to be oblivious of the fact that you need, you know, you need um, running costs and everything. Yeah. So in that process, I also diversified. Okay. Um, but it was still on the fashion. Instead of me, you know, having just a niche, I also created, created other classes of products that is under fashion. So instead of just sticking to oh, the ready-to-wear or whatever, I'm also into bespoke. So I did different classes of products, but I'm still under fashion. Mm. So at least we know the ready-to-wear brings in, you know, um, income fast as opposed to the bespoke. So that way I was able to, you know, use a set of products to also, you know, sustain myself for the other ones. Mm. 
So instead of just facing the sewing and the yes. and all of that, you diversified into other things that will bring income for yes. you. And I imagine that being a marketer, having studied marketing in school, yes, yes. also came to yeah, play it came business. to play, became yes. a strength for you at yes, that point. Yes, it was part of what helped me out. I also have um, um, experience spanning across um, clientele service also. Okay. So, so what would you say is the best? In, you know, how did you adopt technology? Wow. So there's this thing about you being in business. It's not just about you being in business. You also have to, you know, keep upgrading yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to, you know, keep acquiring skills and learning because you can't, if you don't um, acquire more learnings, you're going to be, get obsolete on the, uh, on the job. So what I did was I was always watching out for a lot of, you know, trainings that have to do with the business side and not just the practical aspect of it. Because sometimes we're always... Um, thrown deep into the practical aspect and we forget the business side and that makes us lag behind. So um, that is where we have a lot of um, technological tools and platforms, you know, to grow your business. One of them is the Google um, business, um, Google course that I took mm. because I see Google has one of the very versatile platforms, you know, that allow business, um, small businesses to thrive. And so... I was exposed to a lot of tools. Did you do that and online? Or? Yes, it was a strictly online course. It was okay. just one week and it was in-depth, practice-based, you know. And they exposed us to a lot of tools, you know, that would help us, you know, on how to um, run our business seamlessly and then um, be able to deliver, you know, practically and professionally. Give, so it okay. gave me, sorry about that. So no, it gave ahead, me, um, I was able to position my brand well and it also grew my revenue you know and then i it gave me visibility it grew my visibility also. tell us more about how it helped you to expand your business and give you visibility yeah so um you know um there's a lot about social media now mm -hmm. um the social media space is is you just need to take advantage of that it's one of the things that you know helped my business um those are one of the digital tools um being able to run online ads being um, able to run classes online, those are one of the platforms for that. And so that also grew my audience. And it also brings me out to, uh, to life, you know, I can be here and I can have like audiences all over, you know, globally. So that's one of the advantages of, you know, being exposed to, you know, digital tools. When you talk about training uh, young people, how, how, what's the, how many of them do you train in a month or in a year or in a quarter? Okay. What's um, the level of interest oh, in fashion? Oh, okay. Yeah, there's, there, there isn't a standard number, but um, my kind of training is not more of like, okay, everybody's in class, you know, the mass production kind of training, no. My kind of training approach is more of like a mentoring, coaching type of training. Mm. So I saw the need for that and I needed to bridge that gap because I noticed a lot of people go to fashion school, they go learn, you know, the fashion and the next thing they want to come out, you know, to have their own fashion houses. So I saw that gap and I wanted to bridge it. So that's why I had to offer my own kind of training, which is more of a mentoring and coaching, where you know, I have to deal with the foundation, the problem from the foundation, not just teaching them the practical aspect, but also letting them understand the business side of fashion. Mm -hmm. And very also key, that very key. mentoring, you know, mm -hmm. mentoring also you know, helps you reach your goal faster. So all the mistakes that I have made, I'm able to like let them know about it. So it helps them, you know, jump that hurdle of that long time stretch of struggling through before getting to their goal. So mentoring is, you know, key for me in training. You know, t t take us through a bit because of time, you know, we won't be able to talk much, but a bit of how fashion has evolved. I mean, there was a time when it was more like a cut and sew, cut yes. and join. But today yeah, everything is so smooth, yes. so so beautiful, so glamorous. African prints. We're doing a lot with African prints now. Mm -hmm. talk, talk to us about so, um, the... I, I, can, I can remember during my time when I went um, to train in fashion, it was more of freehand trainings. So I wasn't satisfied with the freehand. Not like freehand is not good, and I'm not undermining the importance of using freehand. So the thing is, most times, a lot of these freehanders, they're not able to you know, transfer the knowledge right, to tell you this is how it works. So for example, now you want to cut a sleeve, because that was one of the challenges I faced 
you know, at my early stage, you tell your boss and say, oh, how did you derive this leave? How are you able to achieve this leave? And then they just give you a number for everybody. Like, okay, just a guess. Do, um, use one to four inches from here. And you don't, I still don't understand it. So that one actually, you know, pushed me into like getting to a fashion school. And that time then I registered into a very good fashion academy. And those days, back in the days, we were top designers. So my boss was a Monami couture then. Oh, so I learned yeah. from Monami and he gave me, you know, the training on a practical level. And it was pattern making training. And it's one of the recent patterns that a lot of designers actually use out there. So the pattern, you know, has the pattern, the advantage the pattern has is it gives you um, options to, to be able to derive a lot of things. There's no design you can't do once you know how to draft your pattern. So far, you know the basics, you know, how to draft the basic blocks. From there, you understand and develop your style analysis. You can do any design as opposed to the freehand. Because if you want to do some very complex designs, you can't use freehand. Probably you could make a mistake and you could just do a guesswork and you might not really get the desired result. But for pattern, it gives you the desired result. Once your measurement is accurate and correct, you come out with a very yes, so you know, top notch. So we have the freehand and then you have the pattern. pattern yes. And the freehand is the reason why we have what I ordered versus what I got. Yes, most of the time. Yes. <laughs> Horrible exactly, differences exactly. between what you ordered yes. and what you got. You're also going to tie and dye. Yes, um, what I do for the tie and dye, I have the basic knowledge in tie and dye, but I don't train. All I do is I collaborate okay. with those that would be able to train, you know, on a large scale. So that's what I do to be able to deliver my trainings, uh, to work with my initiative to deliver trainings to secondary school um, students. So you got the award for, or one, is it nomination? Yeah, to Woman um, in IT? Yes, I did. Tell us about that. Yeah, the Woman in IT series was by Google, and I was nominated. It was, you know, a very, very big, big one for me. And it's a turning point for me in the sense that it's going to bring me out there. I know that. And it's also Is it an award already or it was just it's, a it's a it's it's a like a, a um, series. It's a nom uh, no I was selected. It okay. Okay, you selected. were selected. Yes, in part of those that they selected in Africa women. Oh good business women, yeah. So um aside just um, you know being selected for the IT um, women series, it also has helped me to understand the importance of you know how how much um importance we are how much importance how much important we are, you know, in, you know, to the economy of mm -hmm. the country because a lot of women are in business and we're not in business because we actually chose to be in business. Sometimes you could have your passion, fuel it, but at the same time we're in business because some, um, the um, environment wants us to be, to be that yeah. and we also want to be available you know, for our families to be able to balance, you know, being there for our families as women and all that. So it's actually increased. And then there's also this stereotype in the, um, in the workforce for women also sometimes when it comes to um, equality and um, equity and all that. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, it's um, so far so good. It's been okay, um, very, very, it's, a, it's been a wonderful experience, I would say. It's given me exposure to a lot of things and it's also giving me, telling me something that I have to continue to position myself well for growth because this met me at a point because I actually positioned myself for it. Mm. All right, so what next after this woman in IT yes. uh, selection? Definitely, this has definitely taken you to a new stage yeah. in your career. Uh, what next? So um, this also brings to light that I have to do better it, but I, at, the, my part, at the stage I am right now, mm. I have to um, upscale and I have to um, leverage it to, you know, to be able to affect um, lives and, you know, reach more, more people. Like being able to impact lives through this, um, um, this um, program. Mm, all right. Uh, how, how would you advise other women who are in tech and maybe some other you know, um, uh, I mean, who are in fashion and other skills. Okay. How would you advise them to take advantage of technology? Yeah, so tech is here to stay, whether we like it or not. And if we do not take advantage, like if you do not um, take advantage of it, you need to also expose yourself to the knowledge, you're going to be left behind. 
There's no, there's, there's no two ways about it. You just have to move with it. So tech is going to be, is going to position you well. It's going to put you out there, and we just have to embrace it. That change is part of growth, and tech is coming here to stay. And so we have to, um, we have a lot of youths, you know, using, you know, tech in the negative way. But there are so many positive things you can do with it. You can, you know, deliver trainings. You can um, reach a lot of people far and wide. You can get your um, products, you know, to um, out globally, and you know, practically just communicate. That's what I see. It'll help you communicate faster. Yeah. Do, do women face any kind of unique or peculiar challenges in, in this sector, in this fashion industry? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll say, I'll, I, I, I don't think, there, everywhere there, there are challenges, mm -hmm. uh, but um, the challenges we face individually is actually different. So I don't think it's um, maybe a woman thing or a man thing right now. So the major challenges we face most time is just about, you know, um, being able to um, have access to finance too. Because I always say it, finance is part of, it's part of you. It's, I mean, it's part of you um, being able to grow your business. You need finance, you need backings, but it's not the major thing. But once you're consistent, you're, um, you, you're focused, then that part will also come in. You'll probably just be exposed to that opportunity. So it's part of positioning yourself to leverage on those opportunities. What inspires your creativity? Wow, for my cre for creativity, I would say, let me just say, basically, a lot of things inspire me. I would say, most times it's about what I see, what I see at that moment that I want to do something, the environment, um, the current trends. You know, those are those things that you know inspire me. Have you gone beyond the shores of the country with your work? Uh, yes. You have clients outside of the shores of yes. Africa. Yes. Um, Majorly, most of my clients are outside Africa. Oh, outside, really? yes, because of the type of way I make my outfits. So now that is where tech comes in. Mm -hmm. How am I able to have clients all over and I'm able to make you know, outfits for them? So now I have, most times we are on, on online calls. That's where I take my measurements. I do WhatsApp calls. We take virtual measurements. That's how it works. And so tech has really you know, helped me. So how do you do the virtual message? They stay where they are with their own tips? Yes. OK. All we do, we just, um, I schedule a time. It's by appointment. We schedule a time. When we meet, it's on video call. I get you to have somebody to have the um, tape measure. And they tell you all the things you're supposed to do. You see me, I see you. Whatever I do, I tell you to do. And you do it. And then the measurements are down. You draft, I draft their patterns, make their outfits. And, I deliver. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. So good to have you join Thank us you. this morning. Thank you so much. Mobolaji Olamide Jaji uh, is a fashion designer who has joined us this morning to talk about tech and fashion. She is the owner of Olam's Creation. Creations. Yeah. And um, if you've been inspired, you can locate her online, I'm sure. She just yeah. talked to you about the beauties of on, uh, you know, doing business online and using tech to improve your business, especially if you are in the fashion industry. You can take advantage of that, leverage on it, and give your business an added advantage, an edge that it needs to move to the next level. Well, thank you so much, Balaji. You're welcome. All right, so we'll be back in a moment to give you a second hot topic. Do stay with us because we're going to move from fashion to the aviation industry.